This is the all new Debian 12 codenamed Bookworm. The next iteration of Debian Stable is finally here. Debian Stable is downright one of the biggest and hottest Linux distributions in the world. Major distros like Ubuntu, MX Linux, Zorin, PopOS, Linux Mint and many more are directly or indirectly based on Debian. So every new release of Debian is a huge news in the Linux world. And this release is nothing short of phenomenal. New and refreshed desktop experiences, updated set of packages and improvements everywhere. Yeah, Debian 12 Bookworm will be the de facto Linux distribution for the next 5 years. So let's quickly have a look at what's new, what's improved and what kind of an experience you will be getting from the latest and greatest Debian 12. We get the all new GNOME 43 here. While this is not the latest GNOME version we have, this is the first time a Debian version will not look ancient compared to other distros. GNOME 43 completely revamps how Debian looks and feels. Debian is a Linux distro that is always focused on delivering more than just looks. But with Debian 12 Bookworm, we get a desktop that feels modern, all thanks to GNOME 43. Debian brings a brand new wallpaper and it's called Emerald. Debian wallpapers don't go overboard with the glitter and they are there just being wallpapers. And this one too is the same. You can go ahead and try out more wallpapers provided by Debian as well as GNOME. The GNOME ones are dynamic wallpapers and react to dark or light modes. We get the redesigned status control menu which brings the newer pill controls here. Things like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi can be turned on and off with a single click on these pills. And additional options by clicking here. This is also the first Debian version that's bringing GTK4 apps. GTK4 apps have a uniform look and feel and the theming is very nice. These new apps make Debian look very polished. Debian may not be the biggest eye catcher we have and it's not supposed to be that. But Debian 12 looks modern and premium out of the box all thanks to GNOME 43. In the Plasma camp, we are getting the 5.27 version. Now this is the latest version of KDE Plasma and it comes with some phenomenal improvements and updates throughout. We get a completely new tiling feature in Plasma which is tiling management on steroids. Really, if you multitask then you definitely need to check it out. We also get polishing touches in the tray here. Now the icons which support middle click operations displayed here. I didn't know that we can adjust the volume levels directly by scrolling on the sound icon here and mute and unmute it by middle clicking on it. I didn't know it because it was never displayed here. But now it does and I'm happier. Plasma 5.27 has a lot of new things. It's also the last version of the 5.x series. Yes sir, the next version of Plasma is going to be Plasma 6. In the lightweight camp, we get XFC 4.18 and Mate 1.26, both of which are very stable and usable desktops and provide noticeable performance gains over both GNOME and KDE Plasma. Debian 12 brings a big change in how audio is handled under the hood. It migrates from pulse audio to pipewire and this is a big step. Pipewire is the modern audio server that has replaced pulse audio in almost all the Linux distros. Pipewire is the underlying tech that will handle all the sounds and this improves the sound latency compared to the older Pulse Audio. It's also less troublesome. Problems that few people face with Pulse Audio seem to have gone now. And if you had no sound issues before, you continue to enjoy the same great experience with a pinch of performance improvements. Apt. Debian's package manager gets a massive update and jumps up to version 2.6. Apt has always been a very mature package manager and Debian and Debian based systems are known for that stability and harmonious package management. Apt 2.6 comes with improvements that enable it to handle non-free firmware packages. To deliver better user experience and compatibility across a range of devices, Debian 12 installs non-free firmware as well. During installation, Debian 12 scans for hardware such as GPUs, Wi-Fi cards and other devices and if they need, it will install the non-free firmware to handle these devices. These non-free firmware are packaged in the ISO file itself. But of course, you can opt out from using these, which I don't recommend for compatibility reasons. To handle these packages, a new repository called non-free firmware is created. Now these non-free firmware are not the same as non-free software. When we say non-free firmware, we are talking only about kernel drivers, not proprietary software broadly. Even DKMS drivers such as NVIDIA proprietary drivers don't fall under this category. So don't mistake the new Debian 12 for Windows 12. The inclusion of non-free firmware in the main ISO file is a big step for Debian, as it has had a very strict open source only policy. But it did hurt user experience at times as getting non-free drivers on some devices could be an absolute nightmare. So after a community voting process, this change was made. So this is really welcome. 
and it's going to make getting started with Debian a simpler affair. And if you don't want this, you can just turn it off while live booting. Debian 12 comes powered by the Linux kernel 6.1. This version brings Rust support for Linux. Rust seems to be all the hype today, especially in the open source world, so Rust finds its way into the kernel. Linux 6.1 also brings support for a range of gamepads. Linux gaming is seeing meteoric rise, so it's good to see work being done here. AMD PMF drivers are also included in this version of Debian 12 and will handle the thermals and power even more efficiently on the next generation AMD Ryzen devices. AMD and Intel integrated graphics drivers have also been improved with an update to the GPU drivers in the kernel. Apart from this, disk management using BTRFS and EXT4 have also been improved. Work has also been done on the latest generation of CPUs from Intel and AMD. ARM support has also been improved. ARM is looking like it's going to be big. Apple Silicon, it did go big. So there's a lot of work going on ARM drivers for Linux and this version sees improvements. Linux 6.1 is all about that incremental growth and it forms the heart of Debian 12. With Debian 12, the installer here has also been improved. Since there are major changes under the hood this time around in the package department that is, like non-free firmware and app 2.6, the installer also has been updated to work with these new things. Also, we know that with every update, Windows makes it hard to set up dual boot. The new Debian installer scans for Windows 11 and sets up a convenient dual boot system during the bootloader process. You get that option to use whichever OS you want when you start your computer. Every new version of Debian is exciting because it brings a set of new packages. When I say new, I mean old. Jokes apart. Debian has one of the most extensive package and integrity testing processes and it's this process that makes Debian rock solid and dependable in any and all situations. And because of this thorough and long testing process, Debian brings you slightly older packages. But everything works flawlessly and it's been made sure of. This kind of reliability is absolutely valuable and unseen in any other operating system. All the features of the operating system work without issues. All the software you install here work without issues. And you get that impeccable user experience. Just priceless. This time around, Debian updates 43,254 packages from Debian 11. That means new software versions of everything. Furthermore, 11,089 new packages are brought in, so we'll get to see many new software here. Also, 6,296 packages from Debian 11 have been removed in Debian 12 as they've become too old and are considered obsolete. That makes a total of 64,419 packages available for us in Debian 12. Most Linux software will be available here in stable, well-tested versions and you'll be able to install them in a safe, quick and convenient way. Debian 12 ships with a good set of pre-installed applications that make it usable immediately out of the box. We get LibreOffice 7.4.4 for all the office duties. You can work with text documents, presentations and Excel format documents using LibreOffice. So students, businesses and pretty much everybody will find working with office documents very easy here. We get Firefox browser here with version 102. Now we get the extended support version here which I personally use. The extended support version is more stable and doesn't update or change repeatedly except for security updates and very big features. I really find it more convenient to use as I work online a lot and don't like things changing repeatedly. In the coding department, we get Python 3.11, OpenGDK 11.6, PHP 8.2 and many more updates to all your favorite languages, libraries and other tools. Not necessarily the latest, but new and well tested. Should be good. In fact, better than good for most projects. There you have it, Debian 12 and all the new things it brings. Debian is a very important Linux distro. For most people, Debian makes sense. Debian is all the great things about the Linux world. I agree, we do get older package versions here and it can sometimes lead you to use programs that lack certain features. But that's rarely the case. With Debian, you get apps that work flawlessly because of the amount of time that has gone into testing them. Debian 12 stable release rolls out on June 10, 2023. You can use the link in the description below to get that. Make sure to check out my course Linux Mastery Express which is the fastest way to learn Linux and level up your Linux game. You'll be learning the essential commands, how to use the vEditor and shell scripting in a very short amount of time. So definitely check it out. Next up, check out 2023's top 7 best Linux distros. I got some really cool ones there so don't miss that. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. This is Linux Techs, signing out.